Hello students, now we are heading to the third session where we are supposed to deal with the nature of sociology. I again reintroduce myself, I am San Jose Thomas, visiting faculty, Department of Sociology, Sacred Heart College, Tevera. Last session we wound up by discussing or we by starting to discuss or we were about to discuss the nature of sociology as a subject and now we are heading into the nature. This is the most controversial aspect whenever we study or whenever we deal with sociology. Obviously, because there are two schools of thought or perhaps more than two schools of thought regarding the nature of the subject. Of course, let us discuss the first school that is the scientific sociology, which say that sociology is not an art and it is a science. Please not sociology as a science. Here, of course, the discussion surrounds around the idea that what is a science? Science can be considered as a systematic understanding of something. Whenever we try to systematize something and to bring or to formalize it into a code, we would call it as a science, which should be supported by, please not, which should be supported by T and C. What is T and C? T refers to theories of any subject. Theories are the foundation stones of any science. Like we give a concrete piling or a stone foundation to a building, theories are the building blocks of a science. And second area is the concept. What is a concept? Obviously, concept are a basic set of interrelated ideas arranged in a peculiar manner to explain a notion. A basic set of interrelated ideas arranged, those who don't know, please write, arranged in a peculiar manner to understand or to explain a particular phenomenon. So as a science, of course, these two things should be there in sociology. It should have a theoretical aspect and it should have a conceptual part. Then only we can call it a science. But this is not the characteristics of a science. For your information, we should understand the basic characteristics of a science. And then we should try to evaluate whether sociology can be designated as a pure science. What are the basic characteristics of a science? Just think primarily or we can say we can call it as part aspect A that include it is objective. Please not objectivity. If we call a particular branch of knowledge as science, it should be objective. Can you call history as a science? History cannot be called as a pure science because there are different explanations related to the same phenomena. If you explain, so say to take the independence of India, if you explain the independence of India from a nationalist angle, it is a glorious achievement. Whereas if you try to explain the same independence from the leftist or the rightist angle, they would be dealing it in a different manner. So history lacks objectivity. Whereas we have to say, we have to discuss whether sociology has the same objectivity or not in the successive time. But of course, objectivity is a characteristic of science, which means entire matter, whatever the subject deal with, it should be handled in, a, in an objective way. It should not be stated with certain preconceived notions, certain prejudices, certain formal ideas that already exist. But it should be viewed independently and separate and in an objective fashion, which means my personal opinion. Remember, my personal opinion or your personal opinion should not color the development of theories and concepts. Rather, it should happen in, a, in an independent manner. So that is the objectivity. Second one, of course, after objectivity, we have to say that it should have precision. Please not precision. A subject should be precise. That is precision. There should be a substantial degree of precision in any branch of knowledge. So the second aspect is precise whether a branch of knowledge deals with the problem or deals with an issue or deals with a process in a precise manner, which means it explains it in detail without leaving any part and connecting it with the larger reality. So that is the second aspect, precision. Obviously, when we use, when we use the term, peculiar term, science, we have to say that science involves laboratory. So there should be some form of laboratory condition. I would not say it's the same laboratory that we find in chemistry or that we find in physics, but definitely some form of laboratory characteristic should be there for a science. 
some form of laboratory understanding, some form of lab understanding. Whether this is there in sociology or not, that we have to discuss eventually. So there should be a laboratory or a lab nature. Then of course the fourth or the D part, which include, so we dealt with objectivity, precision, it should have some type of experimental characteristics. So that experimentality comes here, which we call as laboratory. Please note experimentality. That experimentality is very important for any branch of knowledge. Then of course, the findings of the science should be replicable. Please note, this is an important point, replicability. It should be replicatable. That is the replicability of any branch of knowledge. What do you mean by replicability? Say for example, if you take chemistry or if you take any other branch of knowledge, H2O, H2O should be water. Even if it is in India, even if it is in United States of America, even if it is in some other part of the world, H2O should be water and sodium chloride should be salt. Whether in sociology, we can also say with same clarity, with same precision that a particular phenomenon may happen, may occur, may result in a particular thing or in a particular another phenomenon that shows the replicability of the science and whether you can make it you can repeat it again and again the same finding can be repeated and of course another important characteristic of a science universality universal please not universal a true science should have universal findings what is universal i would make it universality in a better way what what makes it universal or universality it means everywhere in the world, wherever you go, the phenomena may work exactly the same and you can conclude universal theory. Say for example, we know Comtean theories. We know the theory of Max Weber, Protestant ethic and the spirit of capitalism. We know the Marxian theory, economic determinism or communism. Whichever is the theory propounded by the subject, it should have a universal characteristic applicable everywhere in the world. So these are the characteristic of a science. And now, we have to say whether sociology has these characters. This is our question. Whether sociology qualifies to be a science. This is an important question which we are supposed to answer. And whether it has these characters. Let's discuss the first point, objectivity. Is sociology an objective science? No doubt. You are objective, I am objective, and you have a clear-cut theoretical foundation on which the subject is laid upon. That is the T part the theoretical foundation. Without any doubt, we can say that sociology is objective. But is it 10% objective? That remains to be a question because it is human beings who are studied. We study human beings, how human beings interact with each other, how they engage in various social institutions, how they engage in different social processes like competition, accommodation, interaction, integration, assimilation, accommodation, etc. And there, this objectivity cannot be 100%. It may be around 60 to 70%. Please note, it may be around only around 60 to 70%. You cannot ensure a 100% objective social science. Even if it is sociology, which is one of the youngest of the social sciences. Then comes the second aspect, precision. Why we cannot say it is not 100%? Because the personal opinion of the researcher. If I am the researcher, my personal opinion has every possibility. If I'm not going for a scientific procedure, every possibility to color, to shade my findings. Then the second aspect is, of course, precision. We have to say sociology also qualifies this aspect. It is precise, no doubt. As a subject, it has precise definition. It has a precise area of study. It has a precise understanding of the various social phenomena and social processes. And it has a substantial degree of precision related to its findings and its theory. So we have to say there is precision in theory, there is precision in concept and almost 100% we would say that sociology is precise, it is not vague. So we could say almost 100% sociology is precise and it is not vague. That point should be noted. Then laboratory or experiment. Here is a problem. Of course, sociology does not have a laboratory of its own like physics or chemistry. It does not have a have a human specimen to study with the same type of reaction or the response to a situation, to a stimulus we would say. Rather, sociology's laboratory is the society at large. 
me and you are the actual laboratory. So my response to a particular stimulus or stimuli may be different from your own individual responses. It may vary depending on our family, depending on our heredity, depending on our environment, depending on our social and cultural experiences to which we were exposed. So naturally 100% experimentation and a pure clear cut laboratory condition is not possible in sociology but even then we are using experiment as a method we are using experimental method in sociology by using several modern and advanced tools that is a fact then of course replicability and universality we will take it together replicability means the ability to repeat to a great extent this is true in sociology we have a natural potential to repeat our studies, to repeat our findings. Say for example, if I am a researcher and when my research process is over, I could say that these are the findings of my researcher. I found out this thing. I understood this thing. Obviously, I can, I have the capacity to repeat and to show my readers that this happens in different circumstances, in the same set of people, in the same set of variables. But again, there is a problem. It may vary. It may vary from society to society. Same happens in the case of universality also. Say for example, we say that the European society or the Western European society is highly competitive. There are a lot of factors that make it highly competitive. But the same thing cannot be said about Indian society. The competitiveness of Indian society is different. We are more cooperative in character and less competitive in character. So again, there is some problem in universality, but definitely we can say that there are some theories which we can perfectly apply to all social systems of the world, wherever human beings live, and to some theories, of course, to some theories and majority of the concepts, there is a substantial degree of universality. So these are the characteristics that qualifies science. And now we have to say, we have to say, sociology do qualify many of these characteristics and of course we can apply of course we can apply the scientific method to the study of sociology and sociology qualifies please not sociology qualifies to be a science without any doubt we can say that sociology qualifies to be a science and we can apply the scientific method the scientific method to the study of sociology without much difficulty please note we can apply the scientific method and that makes it or qualifies it to be a science then comes the second question as i already stated there is a school of thinkers who say that better than a science sociology qualifies to be an art naturally a question comes what is art what do you mean by the term art Normally, when we award a degree, we would say that master of arts and we would say master of sciences. What exactly the term art signify and what exactly you understand by the term an art student? Actually, art is not something that you perform on the stage, but rather it is the applicational aspect where actually you apply a branch of knowledge. Art involves the application of something in a specific platform that makes something an art and that does not make something a science. So from the sociological point of view, we are applying what is our area, what is our platform, our domain and how could we say that sociology qualifies equally like a science to be called as an art. Our domain is a society and we are trying to, trying to, I would say, we are attempting to apply the findings of sociology in the society. Please use this is our keyword application. Whenever we use the term art, this application in a specific platform is involved. So whether we are applying, whether we are applying something in a specific platform or not, that makes sociology an art. And we have to say that in a lot of areas, in a lot of areas, we used to apply our findings. It may be in the domain of interaction. We try to understand society. We try to suggest. If you take United States of America, in almost all major planning boards, in almost all major planning committees, it is a mandatory rule that a sociologist should be included. If you take Western European countries, in almost all major decision making bodies, a sociologist is definitely included. So there, the sociological wisdom, the sociological knowledge of that individual is being applied, which makes or qualifies the subject to an art. And applied where? Applied in the planning process, applied in the social reconstruction process, applied in finding out solution 
to different social problems applied in the day-to-day -day daily social life of an individual applied in the academic milieu applied in the revision of the subject or the revision of the syllabus and applied in the society in almost all walks of social life in general so to say precisely we have to say that that application part of the subject is very important that makes it or qualifies it to be an art and is it over no there is one more domain that is the humanistic side of the subject we would call it or we would better define it as the humaneness of the subject what is the humaneness of a subject or how could we say that a particular subject is humane humane in the sense whether it actually tries to solve the human problems please not solving the word the key word should be solved here whether it has the potential whether it has the capacity to solve the multitude of human problems that makes a subject to be humane or not and if it could do so if it could possibly suggest solutions remedial measures to different social issues to different social pathology to different social problems we can rightly designate or we can call sociology to be an art and that qualifies the characteristics of an art naturally a question comes whether it is an art or a science this is the most difficult question that many sociologists have attempted to answer and our answer should be it's a combination please not it is a combination of both it combines both the characteristics of an art and science s plus a we would say don't take an extreme position don't say sociology is a pure science don't ever say sociology is a pure art it is a combination in different points at different points it's a combination of both characteristics it has certain qualifications to be rightly designated as a science and it do have certain qualification to be designated as an art so it's neither a pure science it's neither a pure art but it's a combination of both so today we have discussed or in this session we tried to discuss the nature which is a most important question related to the subject that is the nature of sociology and how the nature of sociology is specifically qualified to be designated as an art or as a science and obviously we discuss with two major things that is theories and concepts now to begin with of course we should understand the prominent theories or the theoretical branches that exist in sociology please don't the major theoretical branches i am not supposed to discuss i will not be discussing these theories in detail but i will be giving you a general outline to begin with to start with as foundation a general outline of the theoretical characteristics or the general theoretical characteristics of sociology we have broadly subdivided sociology the realm the artifact of sociology into certain major theoretical perspective which include the evolutionary perspective that is the first one the naturalistic perspective that is the second one the marxian perspective that is the third one then the functional or to some extent the functional structural perspective that is the fourth one that constitute the basic theory there are a lot of theories in sociology you know very well that from the comtean period to 1995 or 1996 which we study for our post graduation level lot of theoretical systems have emerged but the foundations of these theories should be understood for developing a better understanding of sociology as a subject which we would be dealing in the successive session